Hi, and welcome back to another in my series of Mid-Journey AI Art Tutorials. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be going through my entire process end-to-end -end in creating portraits like the one that you see here on your screen. Now, it's important to understand before we get into this that Mid-Journey is not consistent. So you can put in the same exact prompts and get different results. You want a full body shot, it will give you a headshot. You want a headshot, it'll give you a full body shot. It just is kind of random. So you have to get used to pressing that reroll button a lot just to see what comes up more often than not as to whether or not your prompts are actually working. If you try it once and it doesn't work, that's not a good enough sample set when dealing with mid journey. In any case, before we get into it, I just want to touch on something real quick. My last video uh, where I went over photography prompts or photography styles was very well received and I wanted to thank you all for that. I'm still, I was out of town for the last few days and I'm still going through all the comments and trying to figure out uh, how I'm going to deal with them all. But I really did want to thank you all before we get into this. Okay, so as always, when we're going with the tutorial, with building a set of prompts, you want to build them basically one prompt at a time and test them out, see how the combination of prompts work and then make changes if necessary. So in this case, we're going to do the baseline of the beautiful woman prompt. Now, as a uh, side note, as you can see over here on her cheek, there is some marring on there. Now, it doesn't always happen, but sometimes Midjourney loves to throw in these things on, on the cheeks. Uh, especially. Um, so sometimes if you're getting a lot of that, one of the things you want to do at the very end of your prompt uh, line is put in dash dash no space dash dash no space blemishes. And that will give you clearer skin and take the stuff that's, that uh, Mid Journey likes to put on the cheeks. Take it away. Alright, so let's get into this. Now you have your what we're basically basing the rest of the portrait off of. We got our beautiful woman here, and we're gonna go to now tell it that we want a, I'm looking for a three quarter shot, basically from the belt line on up. And I found the best way to do that within mid journey is tell it full body. And I also threw on the, the prompt here of photography at the end. The combination of full body and photography, at least to me in most cases, will give you the body style that you're looking for. If you want a true full body, then it's always good to put the model in some kind of background or say that she's walking, you know, the, the model's walking or something along like that. And Mid Journey will know to zoom out and show you the full body. But if you just want like a three quarter or half body shot, this is the best way I've found to do it. Um, and as you can see, without putting in any other prompts, Mid Journey loves to give you some really awesome results. But we're going for more of a, a traditional photography portrait style here. So that's what we're going to adjust this to. So with the next one, we need to tell Mid Journey what kind of outfit the model is going to be wearing. And in this particular case, I chose casual clothes. If you don't choose what kind of uh, clothing the model is wearing, then Mid Journey will throw up there what it thinks you want to see. And in order to be YouTube friendly, I chose casual clothes. So, <laughs> um, and then as you can see in this particular instance, because I haven't told it what kind of background I want yet, it decided to throw in there something that it thinks would enhance the image. And another thing you can see from this before we get into some of the deeper images, pardon me, something in my eye, uh, is that there is no real way to get a true photograph out of Mid Journey. You can get things that are very close, but if you want things like skin pores or uh, anything that, you know, fine hair, it's going to not do it. It's going to come close on some things, but it's more of a digital painting than it is an actual photograph. So just keep that in mind. 
All right, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to add our background. And I wanted to go with something that was more of a traditional studio background. So I chose plain background. One of the things that you'll notice here is I always have full body up front because I find that telling mid-journey that you want a full body pose is very important. And one of the last things you want to know is that you're doing a photograph. So I put photography at the end. Now, now we have our basic studio set up here. We have the model, we have our clothing, we have the background all set up. The next thing to do is start enhancing it. And one of the things I like to do is there's a couple tag or a couple prompts that I always throw in because they're often more helpful than not. So I always put them in regardless. And one of those is extreme detail. Uh, in this particular image, as you can see, it didn't really help that much, uh, but it does help define things like the eyelashes a little bit more and the clothing. If you're dealing with more fancy clothing or period clothing, it will make it fancier and, and more uh, detailed. Now, once you have your model clothed and you have your details set, you want to modify your models however you wish. In this particular instance, I've chosen green eyes and long blonde hair. And this is what Midjourney decided that I wanted to see, which is exactly what I was going for for a base image. Now, once you have your hair and your eyes made, one of the things I wanted to touch on is, let me just go back to that slide here real quick, is once you say something along the lines of green eyes or long blonde hair or give some kind of unique facial detail to Midjourney, it will automatically want to zoom in on that detail. That's why something like having full body up front is very important because otherwise it will zoom right. If I just said green eyes, it would zoom in right on her eyes just so it could say, hey, look, I made green eyes. Aren't you proud of me? No, I'm not. I want you to do what I told you to. So full body it is. All right. So just keep that in mind. If you're having problems with it zooming in on facial features or other features that you called out, then you want to make sure that uh, you use the full body stance. Another prompt that I pretty much always throw in is the sharp tag or the sharp, sharp prompt. That just helps things look a little bit crisper. There's a saying in photography that you want to get as much right in the camera as possible. That way, when you go to do your post work in Photoshop, then there's less of it to do. And we'll touch on that a little bit later. We've got the sharpness added. We've got our uh, detail added. I mean, as you can see, I put a little tattoo there on her chest and some, a pocket on her t-shirt. Uh, so it does throw in little things every now and then. The next thing you want to do is basically the final step, which is putting in lighting. Now, the lighting here that I chose was I wanted to kind of push the engine a little bit. So I chose orange and teal lighting. And what that did was it, put, did, as I said, put an orange light on one side of her and put a teal light on the other side. The important note here is when you call out colors in mid-journey, like it, for example, here I said orange and teal lighting, it will automatically try and get the clothing, unless you called it out previously, to match that color scheme. So the moment I put an orange and teal lighting, it threw her into an orange shirt. Or in some of the other generations of this, it put her in a teal shirt or an orange and teal shirt. Um, so if that bothers you, then you want to go through and tell them what color shirt she's wearing, what color pants, what color uh, hair, etc. Because otherwise, if you don't call it out, it will change it. So just keep that in mind. We've got our portrait pretty much done. The next step is to take this photo into Photoshop and touch it up. Well, actually, there's a step before that. I'll get to that right now. Okay, so here we are. There's two ways to upscale an image. Well, there's multiple ways to upscale an image, but there's two primary ways of doing it. One is within your photo editing program. Example, here is in Photoshop. You can expand the size of the canvas and then stretch the photo out to that size of the canvas in order to get the size that you want. And Photoshop itself does a very good job within 
with every iteration of Photoshop, it will make it better, but it's still not, it will do a very good sh job. And for 99.5% of the use cases, it's a perfectly good job. I just find for my personal taste that I would like the detail to be a little bit better. So what I do is I use a image upscaling service. And I'll show you that here in a second here. So the image upscaler that I use, and I'll leave links down below for all of this, is image upscaler or imgupscaler.com. Now they do, will let you do a few for free, or you could sign up for prices, you know, for uh, daily, monthly, or yearly prices. Here's the prices as of my filming this. Nine dollars will get you unlimited use for one day. Nineteen will unlimited use for a month. And $69 is unlimited use for a full year. Now I have no connection to this company whatsoever. I'm sure there's other uh, upscaling systems out there that are probably better or different or better priced. I don't know. This is just the one I found that I like. Once you have this, take your base image and you drag it over to this box and then you click on the start button. And after a few moments, it will take that image and scale it up to 400% of what it originally was. And a full scale version for mid journey image is approximately 1024 by 1024. So this quadruples that size. And you click on the download side, it will download the image for you. And then you just save it to your desktop or wherever you're saving your images. I've already got it saved, so I won't bother doing that. And then you can take that image into Photoshop, which is what we have here. Now, I'll run through my steps as to how I will enhance this image. As you can see, it's pretty good right off the bat, but there's a few things that I like to do. The first thing I'll do is I'll zoom in and I'll pan around and I'll just see if there's any glaring errors that mid journey caused that I need to fix. And with this particular image, I don't see any. So we were very lucky there. Sometimes there's lines on the face or there's hair out of place or something along those lines that will need to be fixed. So the second thing I will do is if you look over here to the lower right, I will duplicate this layer. And this is one, this is the way that I sharpen an image. If you go to filters, there is sharpen images, uh, filter here, but that's not what I use. I go down here to other and then high pass and within high pass, as you can see here on the image, I'm not sure if it comes through on YouTube or not, but there is like a faint gray outline as to the features on this particular model. Now you want to adjust the slider here until you basically see just a few uh, lines are just starting to poke out because the lines that you see are what it's going to sharpen and highlight and make stand out a little bit more. So I find that somewhere between six and seven is typically best for at least my taste. All right, so once you've got that, you click on okay. And then the next thing you wanna do is come down over here to the lower right where it says normal. And you wanna click on the down arrow and you wanna choose overlay. Now, if, you, if I turn this on and off, you might be able to see some minor things that it makes stand out a little bit more like the earrings, the stroke, you know, the highlights in the hair. Um, it will also do the eyes will get sharper on there. As you can see, they pop out a little bit more. So this is a general way of making it a little bit sharper. Now, if it tends to be too much for you, what you can do is you can go over here to the opacity slider and you can bump it down to like say 50% or so. But I think for this particular image, I'm happy with where it's at. Another thing you can do is you can put a mask on that uh, filter. And then let's say you didn't want the eyes to stand out as much as they could. You can then use a, like a black brush and just brush over where her eyes are, making sure that you have the mask selected. And as you can see, the eyes are no longer highlighted on there. But since I want them highlighted, I'm gonna get rid of the mask. So now we're back to a nice, bright, shiny image. The next thing I will typically do is I know that mid journey makes some great images, but at least when it comes to portrait photography and things along those lines, it seems to be, in my opinion, lacking in a couple of 
areas, minorly so. And one of those is the vibrance. And as you can see in this orange and teal image here, the vibrance is nice, but it, we can make it better. We can make it stand out just a little bit more. So what I do is I go into Photoshop and I go under the adjustments tab here and I click on vibrance. Now the first thing I'll do is I'll adjust the saturation uh, slider here just a little bit, maybe between 10 and 20, just to up those colors a little bit. And then I'll adjust the vibrance a little bit more in order to get the tones that I want at the volume that I want. Now, as you can see, it kind of brings it up quite a bit, but again, adds a little bit too much to her face. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that mask that's on there and I'm gonna brush it off of her face just a little bit. So as you can see, the vibrance doesn't affect, doesn't affect her face as much, but it does affect the colors of her shirt and the background and lighting just a bit more. And then the final adjustment that I'll add to this is brightness. Now this one is fairly bright as it is, but what I'll do is I'm just gonna brighten it up just a little bit and maybe play around with that contrast until I see something that I like. And that's it. As you can see the brightness here adds a little bit to the overall image, makes it stand out, gives it some pop. And I think that this particular portrait is done as it stands. Then you just save it, you can upload it to your media of choice and you're good to go. So this is our final image within that we created within Photoshop. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this particular walkthrough about my particular process. If you guys have a different process, please feel free to put it down below. I'd love to hear from you and hear what your opinions are of this particular video. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and I will talk to you next time. Until then, have a great day. Bye-bye.